Hi everybody, welcome to this video on Receipt Snap in QuickBooks and Banking Rules. My name is Tom Belton and I'm a Cloud Accounting Specialist here at PJCO Accountants. Um, so we will start with the QuickBooks mobile app and that's just called QuickBooks Accounting on the App Store. So that's one of the easiest ways to get items into Receipt Snap. You just come into the app and you can see here it says Snap Receipt or alternatively you can click in the bottom right corner and then there's Receipt Snap here. So when, once you come into here you'll get the icon to open your camera so if I tap on that it will then pop up and we can take a picture of our receipt and once we do that it will crop the photo for us and we can click use this photo once that uploads it will then go straight into your receipt snap folder in QuickBooks and it would be best to normally do this on the QuickBooks online version after you've got past this stage but I will take another photo of a receipt so I'll click add receipt and take the photo click use this photo and now they will go straight into our for review section on receipt snap so for the rest of this video I'm going to move over to the QuickBooks online web version as we find it easier to categorize the receipts from within there but you can also get receipts into receipt snap using two alternative ways too so now we're on the receipt snap tab which is underneath banking on the QuickBooks online web version. And we can see here the two alternative ways to get receipts into Receipt Snap. So firstly, we can click upload from computer and this will take us straight into our files if we had any receipts saved in there. Mm. Alternatively, we can click on forward from email and set up an email address. So if I wanted to set up one for my company, EJ Limited, I could call it EJ LTD. It's best to make this email something that is easily remembered so that you can forward emails onto this email address. And if you get any emails or purchase invoices sent to you via email, you can just forward the whole email onto this email address and it will put it into this full review tab for you of Receipt Snap. So once the item's in here, what we want to do is then click into them. So if I click into this transaction, it will then bring up the receipt. We want to put the payee in here. So I'll create as a, as a new supplier. And then there are two other main things that will need to be picked up here and this is the bank slash credit account and the account slash category things like the payment date and the total amount should be picked up accurately for you but it's always worth scanning your eye over them so in this bank slash credit account all we want to do is tell quickbooks how we actually paid for this expense so i paid for this one out of the business bank account so i select current and then this one is for petrol so i will put traveling in there and then I can click save and next if, unless I wanted to add a memo or any reference number in there. And then it will search for matches. So at the moment there are no matches found and that's fine. So we can click create expense. And now it says new expense added and you'll see it's disappeared from this full review tab and it will move into the reviewed section of receipt snap. If I now go back to my main banking tab, I will now have a banking match for that transaction because QuickBooks has realized that I've created a receipt in there that I, I said it was paid for out of the business bank account. So all I'd need to do for this transaction now is just click match and that will tie the bank transaction to the receipt for you and that's your work done on that. So if I head back to the receipt section now, we've also got alternative things to do if you've paid for it personally on behalf of the business, which is a slightly different method. So again, we're going to put Asda in the payee for this one. And in the bank slash credit account, I've paid for this one personally, so I'm going to put director's current account. And that will be um, a way of showing that I it's still a business expense, but I've paid for it personally rather than the business bank account paying for it. And in here, I'm going to put subsistence. So I'll save and next, and again, it's going to search for potential matches. If the original transaction, so in this case, this transaction came out of my personal account rather than out of the business account. So we don't need to worry about a match because it won't be going through QuickBooks. So I'll just click create expense and that will be the expense created for you. So if I now view this transaction, I can click up here to bring up the recent transactions too. So I'll click expense and we'll see that it's got the traveling and it's got the receipt attached to it. So I will come back out of the receipt section now and head into banking. And now I'll just talk about how to create bank rules and when would be best to select them. So um, the best use of bank rules is if you've got transactions that occur frequently, such as if you're 
if a lot of large amount of your purchases come from the same supplier or if you've got monthly direct debits. So a good example would be mobile phone. So we see here EE and there are two different ways to create bank rules. So you can either click into the transaction here and click create a rule or you can go straight to the rules tab at the top. The easiest way is normally to click into the transaction and click create a rule because then it's going to bring in most of the detail for, for us. So in here, I'm just going to name this telephone. And I'm, here we want to set the conditions for what needs to happen in order for this rule to apply. So I'm going to say it's going to be money out. And at the moment, I've only got one bank account set up in QuickBooks, so it will be all bank accounts. And I changed this description here to bank text because it makes it a little bit more accurate in picking up the rule. And we want it to contain E. So now that we've got the conditions, we want to then say what QuickBooks should do with it once those conditions have been met. So we want it to be an expense. We can say telephone is the expense category, and we've got the payee as EE. And you can also add a tag if you wanted to here. But this little toggle down here will give you the chance to automatically add the rules. So if you automatically add them, you won't see them in this full review page of banking at all. They'll just automatically go in as soon as QuickBooks recognizes it. I won't do that for the moment because it's, it's sometimes quite nice just to review the rule and make sure it's all set up correctly. So here we see now that we've got one rule applied for EE. And every time you see this transaction now, as long as it's applied correctly, you can just press add. So another way that rules may pop up is if you categorize the same transaction the same twice. So if I get total charges here and put in here a bank name, I'll put them in as a supplier and add bank charges in like this. The next time I add bank charges in, we'll see it's recognized here. But if I now click add, we're going to get a pop up saying is total charges always bank charges? And if that's the case, you can edit the rule here. And I will just call this one supplier name and I'll change description to bank text once again. And then everything else is all set up for us. So we can now save that. And each time QuickBooks sees total charges, it's now going to suggest bank charges for us. Up in this rules section on the banking tab, you'll be able to see any rules that you've got in progress at the moment. And like I mentioned, you could create a new one here too. You do also have the option to import or export rules if you're um, using multiple QuickBooks accounts or anything that may benefit from that. So um, rules is a really good tool to help you kind of speed up your bookkeeping process if you've got a large number of recurring transactions. Thanks for watching, everyone.